start to life, we have come to you on your word, say, whosoever come to you, by no means cast away. Why? The horse is prepared for the days of battle, but victory belongs to God. We might be ready, but you are the one that gives victory. Therefore, we pray by the power that is in the name of Jesus, our hearts we see, Amen. our mind we see, Amen. and our hand we lay hold of it. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. please take your seat. We're going to be super brief tonight. I pray to God that I'll be disciplined. Where we read, uh, where we read earlier, Genesis chapter 13, we're going to focus on verse 15 tonight. What people don't know, that your state of life, your present state of life, is a function of the investment of those who have gone ahead of you. Respectfully, when Bishop Oedipo started winners, he started from scratch. When Pastor Davis was ordained, he started from London. When Pastor Isaac started, he started from New York. Why? Some people don't need to pay a price when it has been paid by somebody. And one of the payments of life that you have to pay, if not, let me tell you something. Failure to do the necessary, it's not cancellation, it is postponement. You remember? Ahab, when he forcefully took the land from that man and his wife, they formulated the lie to the man, they killed the man, they took the land. And when the one of the Lord went to him by letter, he said, listen, this is what's going to happen to you. Ahab broke down. He got a king. He turned into sackcloth and fasted and prayed. And the Lord said, you know what happened? He said, this thing, not like I will take it away, but I will, I will pass it to your children. So the children don't know what is awaiting with, with some people. Your parents have spent your future. Some people you are where you are because some people did not do what they're supposed to do. One day, Bishop was preaching. He said, If poverty is by force, he said, There is nobody called Oyedipo in my lineage that we experience it. That's what he said. That is the most scary statement I've ever. He said he gave every, they said everybody must taste poverty. He said anyone called me in the depot in my village can never taste it. He said because I have secured it. Ah! Who is securing your future? Holy Spirit, take over tonight. Amen. Who is securing your future? Verse 15 of Genesis 13. Bible said, Abraham, if you can see. He said, whatsoever you see, I will give to you. And does not end it. I will give to what? Your children. You see? Your children. Your posterity matter than your prosperity. Your legacy matter. Than your present state of life. Your posterity matter than what? Prosperity. And your legacy matter than what you that, that, that your present state of life. Abraham, if you can see this land, I will give to you. Amen. No, when you say Abraham. And I will give to what? Your children. If there's one thing you should pray for, Lord. Let me align with somebody that have paid the price, that have paid the way. If you can associate yourself with people who understand and do, then you don't need to. So, struggle, therefore, is a function of aligning with wrong people. The segregation that is going in America right now. It's a function of, uh, you know, I, I cannot say too much about that because of what I do. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. So God was speaking to Abraham. He said, see, see, if you can see whatsoever that you see, what happened? 
I will give to you and I will give to your children. Right now, receive the capacity to see, to secure your posterity. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Don't forget the title, receiving the power to see, for, to see your next level. Whatever you cannot see will be too much for you to handle. You must first possess it in the realm of the spirit for you to access it in the realm of what? Of the physical. And I said yesterday, you have, you have to first visualize it before you can what? Actualize it, then you what? Realize it. Very powerful. I love it. Means if, if, if somebody preach a message like that, I will listen to it. Very powerful. Let me show you about vision that we are talking about. Remember, we are the season of divine vision. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Let me show you a scripture that everybody must read. Isaiah chapter 2. Someone shout hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah chapter 2. Come on, let's read verse 1 because of time. That's what the key is. It said, the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw. So, pause a minute. The word that he saw. It's supposed to be the word that he what? That he hear. <laughs> Until you see your future in the scripture, eh? you will never future in your future. That's it. What in English? The word that he saw. The word that he saw. Until you see your future in the scripture, you may never future in your future. Your future is loaded, is connected, is established in how you can see from the scripture. Right now, may every evil scale in your eyes drop off you. Amen. May you begin to see your future from the scripture. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You see? You know, when you don't pay, when we don't pay attention to scripture, you might think it's just a newspaper. Listen, scripture is not a magazine that you subscribe to. It's not a textbook for thesis. It is not articles that you should reference in, in master paper. Scripture is God's intention in a written form. God's purpose documented. God's reality in revelation. That's why David said, he said, hey, hey, Lord, open my eyes that I may see and behold the wonders. God's word is full of what? Wonders. Help me to read that book. Isaiah 34, verse 16. Isaiah was saying, he said, hey, search, don't tell me you don't see it. You know, there are three levels of education. See, don't worry. We'll read later. Number one, if you are undergrad, you will write paper. Eh? You can write wrong, but no matter why you can write, they will just give you a part. Let my people go. So when you come, mistakenly come for master, you will do what? Search. You will write. You will search deeper. But when you come for PhD, what do you go to do? You go to research. <laughs> they will give you committee. You will do methodology. What are you going to do next? Please help me. Literature review. You will look for what you have not lost. You must find it. They say somebody has written it before. Gap in the literature. Yes. You will fill in the gap of what you don't know. They will shake you. They say you are the one that comes for PhD. You know, people take things of the world. I need that light on, please. People take the things of the world is very firm and serious, but the things of the Lord they should realize it. Listen. Inside Bible is how you can be rich. Inside Bible is how you can be heard. Inside, you know, what, when you are facing with the things that you don't understand, search the scripture that people cannot comprehend. 
when you are faced with the things that you cannot understand, search the scripture eh, that people cannot what? comprehend. Inside scripture is the answer to your problem. Is the solution. Somebody shout at me. Open my eyes. So don't tell me you don't find it. No, search. Don't tell me you don't find it. What? Research. As you cannot pick PhD, you know, you cannot pick PhD on the streets. You gotta work for it. I'm talking about a real PhD. The real one. Somebody say real PhD. Real. No, no, no. There are so many people that they confirm PhD on. Eh? <laughs> they said you are, like, there's a guy that Kenneth Copeland, they gave him PhD. He said because, he said he has preached too much message. <laughs> That when they put those messages together and the doctor they stand and they research the message, they say you deserve a doctorate. <laughs> Recently, from ORIU, they went to Nigeria to give that geo a PhD in theology from the school that I graduated from. It does not mean he has a PhD in mathematics, but they confirm that one on you. Apostle John Slimon preached to the extent in the US that a university or you know, a university they, they, they gave him PhD in theology. They can give you PhD that you work because, but I'm talking about so class PhD is work. You will be, you will sweat from every part of you. So if you don't want to be in sweat, but you want your sweat to turn to sweet, you must labor. There is answer in the scripture. Somebody say that after me. There is answer. There is answer in the scripture. In the scripture. There is answer. There is answer in the scripture. In the scripture. That was why Solomon said when there is no vision the people perish because <laughs> if you cannot see what God is saying destruction is the end result he said but he that keep to the law what is the law? the word he that keep to the word he said happy is he can I tell you something if you have your Bible with you, you are online I want you to read the message version of that thing. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Look at how the message put it. If you can put it on Facebook, please, and we appreciate that. And YouTube. He said, if people can't see what God is doing, lack of vision, they stumble all over themselves. Did you see? But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, you will never struggle with people again. Amen. God will bless you beyond measure. Amen. So if they don't see what God is saying, they will find themselves. 29 18, please. Proverbs 29 18. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Restraint, you see? The struggle. Happy what? Go ahead. Happy is he yes? who keeps the law. Who keeps the law? What is the law? Psalm 20, Psalm 1, please. Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of God, in the standing way of sin and the seed of his God, whose delight is in the law of the Lord. You see that? Of the law. Law, the book. Joshua 1.8. This book of the law. Did you see that? It you know in 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 in, uh, in in Israel, what we call Old Testament and New Testament. If you go to Israel and call that, somebody's gonna get mad with you. It is called Hebrew Bible, not Old Testament. It's we is the, the scholars that change it to Old Testament. Uh, uh, Old Testament and New Testament, you, don't call it, you call it Hebrew Bible. And they don't see Bible as something religious. No, they see it as a test, a manual for living. That is why, you know, what the Muslims do, that they memorize four books. So, in, Christ, in, in, in Hebrews, in Israel, people memorize the five books of Moses. Because once you can keep God's word in you, you will see what God is saying. Why it is too difficult for people to comprehend God is because they don't have access to His Word. But I pray for you, you will have access to God's Word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Look at what Bible said in Daniel chapter 10, verse 7. Daniel chapter 10, verse 7. Look at it. Vision from the scripture. Daniel said, I, Daniel, 
alone saw the vision. Only me. Why? You remember in 9, 9 chapter 9, verse 2. He said, I understood true books. You see? Combination. Listen. He was the only one who saw the vision because he was the only one who studied. He said, For the men that were with me saw not the vision. Act in the mighty name of Jesus. You will see vision. Amen. You shall see vision. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let me give you an example. In Acts chapter 16, verse 27 to 29, you know, Paul and Sela, they were in prison, and what happened? They were praising. That is the most of the time that we people we preach about. But let me show you verse 27 to 29 this evening. He said, and the keeper of the prison are waking out of his sleep. You know, then they turn off the lights at night. And the sin and the, uh, the, 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 the keeper, he was far asleep because they put them in a sick, secured prison. He said he was he said, was awake. And seeing that the prison door opened, he drew out sword to kill himself. In the darkness, he knew that the penalty of letting go a prisoner to go is that you're going to replace the, the prisoner. So, immediately that he realized that, hey, doors were open, everybody changed were loose. In the darkness, he, drew, he, brought, he brought out his sword to kill himself. And look at what happened in verse 28. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do that save no harm, for we are all here. Look at verse 29. Then he called for a light. The keeper of the prisoner, the jailer, he said, hey, turn on the light. Let me see if what you are saying is true. But Paul said, no, none of us run away. We are here. He said, no, that's a lie. Because when the prison break, what happened to the prisoner? Mm -hmm. Or Japa. That's what they call it. <laughs> the Japa, that's what they call it in Nigeria. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. He told the priest, the, the, the keeper, he said, listen, 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 no, no, we are here. He coughed. So, inside darkness, Paul can see. For you, you will see. Amen. Remember in John 1, from verse 4 to 5, he said, in the world was light, was light, and the light was light, and the light shine. Darkness cannot what? comprehend it. So when you carry God's word, which is light, it will give you light. And inside light, your light shines. What happened? Darkness cannot, cannot comprehend it. You remember Matthew chapter 4? From uh, Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 4, I'm uh, right. From verse uh, 13. Help me to confirm it. I think some don't want to write something. He said, you are the light. Chapter 5, sorry. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. He said, you are the light. A city that is set on the hill that cannot be. A light does not need light. When you continue to be to be a light, when you continue to move closer to God's work, which is the law, then you'll be able to see. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Tonight I'm going to round up with this. When Jesus Christ was about to be taken up, he called his disciples, like I said. You're going to do seven things tomorrow about vision. That's what we're going to run up tomorrow. Luke 24, please. What is in this communion today, I want you to see. What is it? There is eye opener capacity in, this, in the communion. Luke 24, verse 31. From verse 30, please. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. Jesus was about to eat with them. He took bread and blessed it. He broke, he broke the bed and gave to them. Why? Verse 31. And their eyes, what? Yeah. Were open. Stand up on your feet, everybody. So you don't just take scripture. You don't just take communion, sorry. Inside communion is what? As, it's an eyes opener that will make you to see what God is saying. Wherever you are around the world, you want to take communion tonight. But remember, the person that broke the bread was not the pastor, <laughs> was not the bishop, was not an apostle. The person who broke the bread was what? Was Jesus. Come to Jesus. He's the only one that can make you to see what God is showing you. So wherever you are around the world, 
I told you we're going to be very brief tonight. He said, hey, pastor, pray for me. No, let Jesus pray for you. And this is the prayer that Jesus read, and he tell you to pray tonight, and he's going to accept you, and he's going to keep seeing what God is saying that time. Left hand up, right hand on your chest, bow down your head, and say this after me. Lord Jesus, I'm all yours. I know that you died for me. On the third day, you of the king, that I might be justified. Write down, my sins are forgiven. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become new. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, I know I am a partaker of the price that was paid on, paid on the cross of Calvary. As I come to you, I am a different being serving you. Never go back to the world again. As I take the communion, my eyes is open in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. This communion tonight, when Jesus Christ broke the bread, he gave them communion. When you talk about bread, talking about communion, their eyes were open. And the Bible said, and they knew him. Who was him? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The, the word. What is the word? The law. And he said, this law shall not depart from you. Because when you speak to the law, the Bible said, you will not cast off between you, you will be in vision. By this communion right now, begin to enjoy your life. Amen. Begin to be in line with heaven. Amen. May your frequency antenna be sharp in vision Amen. for you to know what you're going to do for time. Amen. You will never run out of idea. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This is blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you're online, Facebook, YouTube, take communion. You say, I'm a Muslim and a Christian. I'll pray for you. You have given your life to God. Take communion. Take a bread. Take a juice. Bless it. As you take it tonight, your eyes will see. Like I said yesterday, if you desire to not use an F, age to see again, right now, as you take the communion, your eyes is open. Every death or any kind of thing that is bringing vision incorrection, by this communion right now, your correction of vision come to, come to play. Amen. And vision 2020 becomes you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's take the communion. Lift up your hand. Worship the name of the Lord. Give God the glory. Is I am that I am. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. It's offering time. Like I said, we only take offering twice a week. Wednesday and Sunday. Listen to this. The scripture the Lord gave us for offering in this ministry is Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Only those who are led. I've come to understand that you cannot help God. You cannot do what? You can't help God. If God did not send you a message, don't do it. <laughs> for those who have been led tonight to give, lift up your seat above your head and make a declaration. This is my offering of vision. As I give this offering today, I will see what God is saying, I will align with what God is saying, and I will never be behind in everything God has called me to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This is blessed. As you give it right now, you come back to you with hundred foot return. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Lift up your hand and worship the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we give you all the honor. Father, we give you all the adoration. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Tonight, be blessed. Amen. Tonight, be help. Amen. Tonight, begin to see. Amen. Tonight, be help. Amen. Tonight, be blessed. Amen. Tonight, begin to see. Amen. May the spirit of essential come upon you. Amen. If people cannot see, you will see. Amen. If people cannot hear, you will hear. Amen. If people are confused, it's not be you. Amen. For you. We always know what to do. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I will say, surely, surely God's goodness, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I'm stepping up in Jesus' name. I'm going up in Jesus' name. God has given me the command. Next level is my portion. Congratulations. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Give somebody another say, now I can see. Now I can see.